Now before we set up the simulation, let me show you the mesh setup. By default, Momentum will automatically create a mesh for you using the following. It will have an edge mesh around the edges because it assumes that there's current bunched around the edges. It's more dense, so that's automatic. And then it will use the highest simulation frequency. In our case, it's 10 gigahertz. And create 20 cells per wavelength at that high frequency. So this is the default, and we're going to use this, but you could set it up any way you want for a coarser mesh or a denser mesh, with or without edge mesh. This sometimes saves time, but you may trade off accuracy in some cases. You can mesh individual drawing layers. You can mesh primitives. All this is available, but we'll use the global default mesh, as you see here. Now let's set up our simulation, and now we'll complete our steps. Using the command Momentum Simulation S Parameters, a dialog appears where you can set up the sweep. Notice that there's an adaptive type, also log, linear, and single, but this adaptive type is the default. I set a start of 1 GHz stop of 10 to match the circuit simulator with 101 sample points as the limit. This adaptive sweep will take the first point and the last point and points in between. And when the testing is done to the point where it knows the S parameters aren't going to change anymore, it can then just interpolate. It's like a curve fitting, and you'll get your data much faster than simulating all the individual points. Now, in this dialog, you can name the data set or use the default, and there's a presentation template that will come up, and we'll see that in a moment. So I'm going to click the Simulate button, and then we'll get our momentum results. Here's a data display that automatically appears with the presentation that's a template. I'm going to close this and go back to our other data display. And now I'm going to double click and that will bring up the plot traces and attributes dialog and now I can select the data set that I want which in this case is this easy line mom underscore a a for adaptive and then we can select S21 add it in DB click OK and here we can see the result. We have a very close match between the circuit simulator and momentum and this is expected. Next I'm going to go back into the layout and show you the mesh pattern and you can see that here we have edge mesh along the edges both the inside and out and we have our cells. I'm going to change the spacing now so that we have very closely spaced lines and see what momentum can do for us. Let's go ahead back to schematic and that's where I'll set that spacing up with the variable. The first thing I'm going to do though is use control A to select everything in layout and delete it. And here back in schematic I set the spacing up to 2 mils and then I regenerate the layout using this command and here are the results. Now you can see the spacing is very close. So I'll put ports back on and then we'll run the simulation again which is already set up and now we'll change the data set name so that we can identify it underscore two mils and simulate. While the simulation is running I want to point out that ports always need to be on the same layer as the metal and in a moment we'll have our results. I select the 2 mil data set, S21, and add it in DB. And here you can see that with the close spacing, once we get over about 2 gigahertz, there is a definite difference between what we simulated with momentum and what we simulated with the circuit simulator and momentum where the lines weren't closely spaced. And the circuit simulator would not be able to give you these results. To prove this, I've gone back to the circuit simulator where we have our 2 mil spacing and I use the command simulate setup and then I have a new data set name, circuit 2 mils, and I ran the analysis and here are the results. The 2 mil spacing from the circuit simulator is very, very close again to the first results. Only using momentum can you take coupling into account for closely spaced lines. Now Momentum has a lot of other features and capabilities, but we're going to look at the spiral inductor next and that will bring our video to a close. 
here in the ADS main window, I'm going to the examples directory and then into the momentum folder microwave spiral project and that's what you see here and I've opened up the design spiral so let's take a look at it right now and here's the schematic as you can see the mesh has already been created and that's because it's been solved as with all of our examples there's a data display and everything in momentum is already set up so let's take this step by step I'll begin with the ports. It has two ports. This one on the drawing layer that you see, it's internal to the structure. And then throughout all our windings, there's a via here. And the via comes up into another drawing layer where we have port two. And zooming in, you can see the via here is just a polyline via. And that's what we recommend because it will solve better. That's the thin green line that you see here. That's our via. The results come from the simulation that was set up from 0 to 5.2 gigahertz, as you can see, with the adaptive technique. Let me show you the data display for this example. And here it is. Notice that measured data is in this data set. That's the red trace and the blue trace is for momentum. So for impedance, S11, transmission, S21, and our phase for both of those respectively, you can see that the momentum data is very close to measured data, and that proves momentum's accuracy, especially for solving spiral inductors. And so this covers the basics of ADS momentum. Remember that we always have to have a layout with ports. Then you can use the momentum menus. There are two modes, full microwave and RF. The substrate is defined right here in this command where you can update it from schematic both the dielectric material and the individual drawing layers that are mapped as strips, slots, or vias. Also in Momentum we define the ports. They can be single ports, internal ports, coplanar waveguide ports. You can even renumber them using this command. We have box waveguide setup the component allows you to use the advanced model composer or create a look-alike component. And we cover that a lot in our ADS momentum and layout course. You can pre-process everything. And here you can see the pre-processor dialog, which we won't go into. But generally, it will clean up your layout. And for example, in this case, what you see are two individual polygons and there's a very severe angle here, well the preprocessor will clean up that angle so that you can then use it with momentum and avoid any potential problems. The mesh can be calculated in advance. You can set it up for the global structure or individual layers. And then when you simulate basically the S parameter setup, post-processing includes visualization, radiation patterns, and then finally, we have this command here, which allows you to use these files for our 3D EM simulator. So all of this is covered in our Momentum course, and that brings our short video on ADS Momentum to a close.